Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Atlanta Falcons. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. And they lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They'll have Cam Newton calling the shots. The big man under center at 6'5", nearly 250 pounds. He had the numbers of a game last week that if you win, you talk about him being a gritty guy, managing the game, getting it done. But they lost. So obviously two interceptions, one touchdown pass, that's not going to be good enough. Got to get that changed around. Play fake here on first down. This will complete to Devin Funches. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. The numbers on the ground for Carson last week. 15 carries, 95 yards, and a score. After the last game, they had plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're facing a top-10 defense, they're not going to shy away from doing what they do best. Make them adjust to them. Make them stop what they do before they go to any type of a changeup. Tackle made by Devondre Campbell. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. Fighting touchdown, Carolina. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. You talk about explosion plays. There's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you, just as you described, right out of the gate. Big sprint, touchdown. They're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up the touchdown on the opening drive.
They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Gone, 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 gone. Looking to throw. The open man is Smith. Yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important right, early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Let's go! And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They go play action here on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. On second down, here's Smith. They're back now to the original line of scrimmage thanks to that eight-yard gain. Third down now to follow. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing him further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. the play fake he'll look to throw he'll buy some time right and he's got a man Calvin Ridley and they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20 and a nice gain of 21 yards looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people on the run, had to get on his horse, still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. A first chance in the red zone for the Falcons now. They have a first and 10 at the 18. All right, here we go. Three, nine, ten. Now they'll run on the ground. And he's got this one down to the 10. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Staying on the ground, this time is Smith. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. The numbers there in last week's game for Smith. The hat trick plus one, four trips to the end zone with his legs. And partner, you know how all the guys do when they do that little symbol now about eating, right? Keep feeding me, feeding me. They just kept feeding him and feeding him, and next thing you know, he kept getting in the end zone. They'll drop the throw. They'll roll him out right. And that'll be hauled in by the tight end. It's Hooper for the Falcon touchdown. 
Austin Hooper, his first touchdown on the year. Now the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. So he scrambled right, but was able to look back toward the middle of the end zone to find the target. As you know, in this game, sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules because we all know most guys throwing the football are taught never throw back into the middle of the field on a scramble. He did it and got away with it for a touchdown. Instinct sometimes, right? They just take over. Instinct and vision. Sometimes you just see people who are open, you're able to get it to them. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive helmet. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. It's caught by Clive Walford. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers. But they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. From the 50, Newton. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That hold coming from the Still left side of the down. line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out penalty against them. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. From the gun, here's Newton. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. That throw good for four. It's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. A shotgun snap for Newton. Escaping the pressure right. He may try and run for this. How about another? And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Under the category of obvious, you hate giving up a first down a third and long. And somehow he finds his way downfield and picks it up. Yeah, if you look at the coverage defensively, oh, this is great, but no one accounted for him at the quarterback spot. At some point, you actually have to tackle it and get him on the ground short of the first down marker. Here's Carson. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top 10 units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? They'll try the air now with Newton. This throw right caught right around the six. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And his guys are able to strike for six. And always.
always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Falcons offense making their way onto the field. Let's take a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And I tell you, four weeks still to go, and everything is wide open, and it's fun. And I know we always talk about, what well, the playoffs were to begin today, and then we kind of go, okay, but they're not. Let's see how it plays out. Wouldn't it be fun to play with this playoff lineup right now? Because to me, just about anyone can win this whole thing out of this grouping we currently have. And by the time we get there, it may look entirely different. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Sliding out of the pocket. And incomplete on the deep ball. Jaron Brown, the intended target. And it's third down. Even though that one was incomplete, you could see the training that went into that play. He gets out of the pocket, ends up moving to his right. All he's trying to do, though, extend the life of the play. Keep it alive, hoping someone would pop free. Was able to take a pretty good shot with a deep ball, but incomplete. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Play action supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. We call that a punt of 38 yards officially. Carolina getting set to take the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing? often alters the normal spacing and run fits and makes creases like they were able to exploit right there. They run it with Carson. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. It'll be a gain of two on the play, but they'll remain a few inches short here with third down looming. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. He can run for it, and he will. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. He'll grab three yards on the play, taking it himself for the first down. And while it's highly unusual for NFL teams to think about using their quarterback on key third down runs, none of those teams save one has Cam Newton. He's unique, one of the biggest quarterbacks you'll ever see. Give him the ball, let him pick it up. Looking downfield for Jones. It's Desmond Trufant. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Back to throw. And this one is incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. The pitch goes to Smith. Oh, look at that. And he roams across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. 
And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short after the incompletion on first down. It's awfully nice to have a running back Detroit, that you can hand Detroit. it to and put you back in a good situation. The Falcons on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Back to throw here. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Give him two yards on that play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Now Edo Smith. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. And on fourth and one as a running back, you're looking for any seam you can find. This is not where you want to be a hero and break off a big one. You just need to make sure you get that yard. And here he picks up the first down with a couple of yards to spare. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll set up the throw. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They'll run for it here with Smith. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A curious decision to go for it, but it pays off with a first down. Wow. I'll tell you, he got a good spot on that one. It's fourth and two, and he might have gotten two and an inch, but that's all he needed, and that'll keep the drive moving. Back to throw now on first down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. On play action, they'll throw. Rolling to his right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position. Couldn't hold on third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. He'll look to throw. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Normally, I'd say this will lead to a punt attempt, but this offense already shown in the first half that they'll go for it on fourth down. Well, they should have already said, punt it, punt it. Head coach have already made that decision. Going for it has paid off twice already on this drive. Can they convert again on fourth down? Let's see. They'll run for it with Smith. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And the Panthers are going to get it back in excellent field position. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Looking to hit Matthews, but it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant, and he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Matthews, the intended target. 
So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. They'll look to throw here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But the Falcons were able to recover, so they will keep possession. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. They'll look to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Knocking it away there defensively, Justin Coleman. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. The punter Bosher on now as he gets this one away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. Now, second and seven from the 23. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL. And it, due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. It's complete to Jerron Brown. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Here's a give to Smith. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Detroit! Detroit! 
They'll look to throw now on first down. Over the middle complete. It's Saunders. Now the ball comes loose. And the Panthers have recovered. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they were hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, here's Newton. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Jones. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because they have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Back to the air, Newton on second down. And the hit charted loose. It's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Here is Matt Prater now. He's got the leg for this as he holds the NFL record with a 64-yarder back in 2013. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to 7. So it's not an NFL record, but it's not far off. That'll go in the books as a 61-yard field goal. And wasn't it weird to see a guy line up for a field goal on the other side of midfield? The ball got halfway there, and you thought, no way is that going to make it. But it just kept carrying and carrying, and he winds up sneaking it Detroit! right over the ball. Detroit! Now a play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Looking to throw. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. 
They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. And they'll run it here. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? He'll drop to throw. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. The Falcons on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time they face a third and two. They'll try and run for the Smith. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short. That's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. They'll set up the throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Here's a play fake as they set up the throw. Forced out to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Falcons on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and ten. They're going to look to throw. This is caught. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. It'll buy some time right. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. It's their quarterback with touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year. And the Falcons have cut it to within a score. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Great play by him. This one fielded at the five. 
Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at about the 32. Here's a handoff to Carson to begin the drive. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. They run again with Carson, and he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation, and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. From the gun on third down, Newton. And incomplete here on third down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like he said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Falcons offense making their way onto the field. Let's take a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical, or they want to take the big strike and go after it right now. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They'll start on the ground. It's Edo Smith. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. They'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They keep it with Smith on first down, and he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. The Falcons on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. This is third and nine. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Saunders. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Saunders. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Right, they? when we talked about him, they yeah, did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. They go play action here on first down. Flushed out right. 
And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. A handoff to Smith. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Edo Smith, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in the fourth. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Here's Bosher to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Panthers coming out now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close... You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Newton. Caught on the right side by Jones. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Newton now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Out of the gun, Newton. Caught left side by Funches. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. On first down, Newton fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. To the air again, Newton. And this one complete right side to Funches. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Newton will bring him up first and 10. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. Throwing again is Newton. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Newton now, 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Newton throwing again. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Good positioning and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, well, here we are in December. Giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake, after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. You know, I was going to ask you if maybe they should surprise and pass the ball, but where they're at on the field, I think keep it on the ground, right? I like where you're going with this one, because field position is going to determine these play calls and backed up where they are I don't even think about putting the ball in the air I tell my running backs grasp the football and I tell my offensive line 
don't allow any leaks, so they get hit immediately when we hand it off. They'll run it again with Smith, and he stopped immediately there. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll drop the throw. And that's caught by Smith. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. A first down carry for Smith. Spins past him, and he's got Rome. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Detroit! Detroit! Ah! Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They'll toss it to Smith. Eight yards on the ground there, and now they're looking at a third and two. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Watch him now, Barney, Barney! On third down, Smith... And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. But well, they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Leopard! Leopard! Huh? Now a toss right to Smith. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Toss left. This is Smith. Now he'll be brought down short of the 15, but a really good move on the run. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Now they'll run it on the toss. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. There to stop him on the defensive side, Fred Warner. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. 
So for Atlanta, the win is their fifth of the year as they move to five and eight. And they will head home next week to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, it's unfortunately more of the same as they'll fall to three and ten on the year. And they'll try to get back on track next week as they head up to Orchard Park to take on the Buffalo Bills. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Oh. Oh.